I've covered Dr. Lane Norton a few times here on The Old Physionic, and this time I ran across a video where he's asked about his three Mount Rushmore supplements, as in supplements that he'd recommend to almost everyone. Now, for Mount Rushmore, there should be four since there's four heads on Mount Rushmore, but he only mentions three, so I'll add another to make it four. Anyway, if you don't know Dr. Norton, he earned his PhD in nutrition science, and he's quite vocal about being science-based in his work. So without further ado, here's what Dr. Norton has to say. What are supplements that everybody should have in their stack on average, do you think? What are the supplements that really work? Okay. So I kind of like branch these into like tiers, right? So my Mount Rushmore of supplements would be uh, creatine monohydrate would be number one. Um, Dosage, frequency? Five grams a day. Th there may be evidence that like 10 or even maybe a little bit more has cognitive benefits. Tim Ferriss been um, talking about that. Yeah. So it's very safe. I mean, there are people who have been hand wringing about creatine for a long time. And the, the worst thing that you can say about it is people say, well, it causes hair loss. Okay, we'll get to the hair loss part, but let's address the beginning. The first supplement is creatine, especially creatine monohydrate. Now, I wholeheartedly agree. Monohydrate is the cheapest form and it works just as well as any other formulation. Also, it's been shown to be effective across a range of studies in relation to muscle mass, muscle growth, muscle performance. But then Lane or Dr. Norton mentions it might have an effect on the brain. And that's also true. I covered those studies extensively. I'll link my work for you. This is especially true for older individuals, those over the age of 60 or so. Okay, but what about the uh, hair loss part? No, there was a single study in 2009 that showed creatine supplementation increased DHT. That is not the same thing as showing hair loss. DHT is a marker and that is a mechanism. Now, that's never been replicated and they didn't show a viable mechanism by which it does it because the 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 their testosterone levels didn't change which is the precursor and then the in the 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 product after dht didn't change so either creatine is having some direct effect on this enzyme or this is a data artifact that has not been replicated like dr norton said that idea came out due to this study wherein creatine consumers experienced a significant increase in the molecule called dihydrotestosterone or DHT for short. I remember looking into this uh, a number of years ago and there were some mechanisms that were proposed contrary to Dr. Norton's take here. The idea was that DHT levels rise and DHT has a potent effect at miniaturizing the hair follicle. Now, the reason it only happens on the head is because the enzyme that produces DHT comes in two isoforms or different versions. And the scalp one is the one that's affected by creatine. Now, to be clear, this is taking several leaps based on a single short-term study. And it's true, there are no direct assessments of hair loss with creatine supplementation. Now, I'd love to tell you that we have definitive evidence one way or another, but we don't. There's even a study that was in the works to address that question, but I see that the uh, funding was withdrawn. So the study is no longer in progress. Big Bald is putting up the roadblocks. Anyway, I wouldn't worry about uh, the hair loss part. And although Lane doesn't mention this, uh, kidney health is another fear for many, yet I covered that as well. There's no concern according to this study. And I go over more on my video on that topic. I mean, look how concerned I look in the thumbnail. I mean, clearly you have to watch it. And one final thing Dr. Norton says, which I co-sign completely. I'm not saying everybody should be on it, but it is a low cost, high yield supplement that is very safe. And we're not talking about a couple studies. We are talking about thousands of studies done over decades in labs all over the world. I am very confident. In fact, I was so amazed by creatine's effects that I wrote a book about it detailing over 100 studies. Now, I don't sell it anymore, but it is included for the Physionic Insiders along with all my perks. 
like the podcast, the full library of videos, and more. So it's linked in the description box if you're so inclined. Okay, let's jump to the next Mount Rushmore supplement. Now, caffeine. Caffeine is the original nootropic. It is the original performance enhancer. Um, and if you look at the benefits of caffeine, increases cognitive performance, increases exercise performance, um, downsides negatively impact sleep. So if you're going to take it, do it early in the day. Okay, the second is caffeine. Now, I would actually slightly change that mention, and I'll explain why in a minute. But overall, yes, caffeine is a cognitive benefit, and it's a performance benefit. I've covered that in the past as well, which shall also be linked for you. But I covered studies like these, wherein people who consume caffeine tended to outperform those that don't, if that's endurance exercise like running or even resistance training performance. I also agree that timing caffeine is important because it can lead to detrimental effects in that it affects sleep. So generally, I have my own cutoff point, consuming it only in the morning. Um, as far as dosage, I mean, you get some anti-fatigue benefits like 50, 100 milligrams. You get start to get the performance benefits once you get up around two, 300 milligrams of caffeine, like for exercise. Strength benefits like acute strength benefits are more like three to 600 milligrams of Jesus caffeine. Christ. Yeah, that's a lot of caffeine and he's right. In this review, they mentioned the benefits start to occur around 1.5 milligrams per kilogram of body weight when it comes to resistance training. The endurance benefits might be a bit lower. You can see why consuming it earlier in the day is important to preserve sleep, especially on that high of doses. Before we go on to the third supplement, I'd like to circle back, as the consulting world would say, and mention that the molecule caffeine has all these effects, but the greater benefit probably comes from the other compounds that come along with it, like health benefits. We've been focused on performance, but the health benefits of caffeine probably more so come from the other molecules that come along for the ride, like polyphenols that you'd find in black coffee or even some teas. So it's one distinction that I think can make caffeine from, yeah, it's a good idea for performance and mental stimulation to it's great for health as well. I have a very fun video on that topic that I'll link for you. And yes, the title is sarcastic, and I really had a blast with that one. Anyway, moving on. Uh, creatine, caffeine, whey protein. Uh, whey protein, tasty, relatively cheap, soluble, um, been shown to improve body composition numerous times. It's not magic. It's just a very tasty kind of ubiquitous form of protein that's highly bioavailable. So the final supplement that Dr. Norton mentions is whey protein. He mentions that it has a weight loss or fat loss effect, and that's true, as many, many studies have indicated that whey protein does exactly that. However, I don't think it's because there's anything magical about whey, and rather just a substantial increase in the most potent satiating nutrient, protein. So, could these effects be had at least to some extent by simply upping your protein intake? Yeah, probably. Still, it's true that it's generally pretty cheap and works well, even if it isn't uh, magical. I mean, for example, creatine earlier is literal fairy dust. I kid, of course. But the benefits are not as easily had, unlike whey protein, where other protein sources could offer the majority of the same benefits. So is it a must-have supplement? Not at all, although it can be very helpful and has mostly positives to its name. Now, as I mentioned, that's not exactly a Mount Rushmore, considering it's three, not four. So if I can add one, I'd add omega-3 fats. This is another one, like creatine, that has more research releasing that it may benefit multiple organ systems. One, the heart, but also the brain. I have many videos opening the studies and actually explaining the data and the mechanisms. I'll link uh, those for you as well. That said, this is another one that could probably be replaced by actual food and may not be necessary for everyone. 
For example, eating fatty fish just a few times per week may reduce the need for supplementation. And it isn't limited to fish sources. It can also come from algae sources, so long as they're omega-3s. So overall, what's the takeaway here? Well, I like Dr. Norton's perspective on these. I largely agree with his points, and I think a few things I'd frame differently, but overall, solid choices in the end. No supplement is necessary, but these three or four, creatine, caffeine, especially in coffee or tea form, with polyphenols co-consumed, whey protein, and omega-3s are a great base. And if you aren't interested in weight loss or already consume a lot of protein, I'd even save your money on skipping whey protein. Honestly, there's plenty more to be said on each of these, but I'll leave the more detailed discussions for some of my other work, which is linked below, as well as here. And really, if you like horrible jokes, this one is particularly funny.